you know, the basic building blocks of traceability, um, first we have uh, objects, so traceable objects that we want to keep track of. So in the case of food, that would be uh, the actual food product and the lot. Then we also look at the locations, where the food is produced and where it travels through. And then we look at the events that are collected along the way, everything from manufacture of ingredients to processing to shipment and receipt. Um, I think the key elements for us for traceability are understanding where the product is coming from, the, you know, what farm it's coming from, what plant it's being manufactured in, um, where it's being cut, when it's being cut, and then who is actually being distributed out to, um, and being able to make sure that we can get that product back if we need to in the event of whether it's a label problem, whether it's an um, ingredient problem, or whether it's an actual um, problem with the product. I think some of the benefits we've seen so far are just being able to have rules to kind of guide us through what we're doing. Going forward, I think, with what our future plans are, implementing the GS1 standards will, again, it'll give us a guidance to follow an industry standard. Well, aside from food safety, which is, of course, number one, we're interested in, in having standards because Sustainability is such an issue in the seafood industry. Knowing where you sourced your fish, knowing that that fish is sustainable, it's, it's not about to go out of existence. So that's, that's really key for us. So that's another really good use of it. Product integrity is another one that the seafood industry is ever in the news about. Uh, you thought you bought grouper, but it turns out it's tilapia. So if you've got a codified standard, that kind of ends all that problem. The critical tracking events are those places along the line where something happens to your product. It's, for us, it's taken out of the water, it's moved to a uh, processing plant. This may vary depending on who the, the uh, individual is involved, and, uh, and then it may go to a distributor and, and on out to a retailer. What GS1 brings is whole chain traceability and critically a, a shared standard. So it's a shared language that will enable that case of tomatoes as it moves from the farm through Mexico to the distributions into the retailer to maintain the integrity of the data that goes with it. And really that hasn't existed before. So GS1 gives us that shared language that uh, it really will speed everything up. One of the biggest things uh, with, with traceability and food safety is in the case of an outbreak that you can quickly find the source of the outbreak, but that's really just the beginning of it. If you have complete supply chain visibility, which is directly resultant from the traceability data that's being collected by the supply chain, you can have a real-time vision of where the product is. So you can quickly and accurately pull the product off the shelf. And also, more importantly, you can tell where the product is not. So you don't have to alert uh, restaurants and retailers that don't have the impacted product, which helps restore c consumer confidence much quicker because you're not having these broad-based recalls. You, they're more surgical, they're more precise, and they're more accurate. I think as a manufacturer, we're going to be constantly moving forward because of the requirements and um, the drivers from our consumers or our retailers. If you're able to trace your product back, if there is a problem, I feel like people, consumers are going to have a lot more confidence in you as a manufacturer or as a brand um, if you're able to do that.